<laughs> Tell me about the first time you knew you were going to be a DJ. Uh, pretty funny actually. It was my dad's. My dad is a DJ yeah. today, right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's a DJ still, and he uh, he was he do socials like high school socials. So he he took me. He started taking me to um, these gigs. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, like, and I and I go. I tell you, what I'm pretty good at is like you know, um, the leads, you know, yeah. winding the leads up yeah. and doing those knots and stuff. I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah, so I used nice. to go along to the gigs and do that. And um, at some point in time, Dad said, uh, I think it was, I think I was on made up a grammar. It was like a, yeah. a school social. He's like, oh, you know, do you want to play a couple of songs? Cause I just want to go do something. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> and then I just got on there, and that was it. I gotta send shout outs, mad love to Christchurch too, man. My boys up yeah. here doing it up, man. Two Horner in the house. Tell us about when you made that transition to radio. The radio thing was pretty big because I had always wanted to be on radio. Yeah. In fact, little people probably don't know, but way, way back in the days, I used to do the graveyard shift on um, on Auckland 95 BFM in Auckland yeah. with a guy called Pesini who, who was real instrumental in getting me on radio. I was like, oh, you should come do this. And I was like, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So I started doing it and I realised that radio, I really like radio. Yeah. <laughs> so you're the editor of Back to Basics. Yep. Tell me about that. How did that happen? <laughs> Funny story about Back to Basics was I didn't really want to do it, to be honest. No? I basically got talked into it. Now, to be perfectly honest with you now, it's kind of like, I really love doing it. It's yeah. like the one thing. It's not the one thing I love the most because every, I like doing all the stuff, you know? You just like a new challenge. It's like a new challenge and, dude, I can honestly do this job for a long time because I really, yeah. really enjoy doing it. Tell us about your first introduction to television and <laughs> and then also what you're doing with television now. Well, the, my first introduction to television was True School and then eventually MTV New Zealand came along yeah. and poached us. Yeah. Of course, MTV went under yeah. and then um, M2 popped up. So I did M2 as a fill-in for money for a while. Their money started going overseas all the time, so I started doing that quite a bit. And then MTV, M2 and that. C4 kind of approached me, I approached them, we came together, and it just worked, man. Why wasn't I here last week? Because I had my feet up, actually. Tell us about the things that you're proud of with what you've done. Um, what I'm most proud of probably is the amount of friends I have now through hip-hop. It's like um, the people that, that are like my close their friends like SAS etc and then this whole encashment of people that I deal with on a regular basis that's my biggest achievement bro. Being that it was so hard to sit you down and get this interview you are obviously and I've always known this you're one of the hardest working men in New Zealand hip-hop how do you do it man? Um, it's actually not that difficult bro. No. It's, it's honestly it's not as it's not as hard as you think man why, why I say that is because um, I guess I got, just got good work ethic, right? Yeah. Like, I, I can name countless people who I've heard say, oh, you know, I'm doing my thing, grinding real hard. No such thing, right? All I know is that at 7.30, my kids need breakfast. At 9.30, I need to be at the office. And at 5 o'clock, I'm probably going to be finished the office, then I'll do something else for, you know, till later on that night. I'm just saying... There's 24 hours in a day, and getting up at lunchtime and playing PlayStation 2 is not one of them.